Welcome back to my YouTube channel, guys. I'm not gonna lie, not in the best mood. We're talking about taxes today. I've just done a deep dive and a refresher on some of the US tax laws, and man, it does not make me happy. <laughs> so this video is gonna overview the differences between paying taxes in New Zealand compared to the US, and also a little bit of a deep dive into American expats that live abroad and how to pay your U.S. taxes and some of my thoughts on that and sharing some personal experiences. So even if you are not an expat, I would recommend that you watch this video just to get a sense. It gives you a sense of what it's like for Americans living abroad or just uh, just dealing with American tax law in general. So here we go. So if you are new to my channel, welcome. We are a family of six that have moved from the US to New Zealand and have been here for seven years. And today we're gonna to talk about paying taxes. This is one of the questions that I get so often from my clients and they've been begging me to do a video. So this is a video. I also wanna do a shout out to our sponsor today, Bright Tax, for sponsoring this video. You guys, if you are moving to another country, you are going to need a tax service. And I highly recommend Bright Tax, I will talk about that a little bit later, but they are sponsoring this video, so thank you. Here we go. Okay, this is how we're gonna do this video. I'm gonna overview doing New Zealand taxes, and then I'm gonna go into paying your US taxes when you are living abroad and some of the things to watch out for. So let's dive into New Zealand taxes. A couple things I wanna say about this. I have been living in New Zealand for seven years now and have been paying taxes, and let me tell you, the first thing I wanna say is that it's so easy comparatively. Now, if you don't know, US tax is difficult. So difficult, in fact, that they have all this, there's whole businesses that thrive because it is difficult. And so I think that's why they keep it difficult, but don't know. So paying taxes in New Zealand, so easy. When I first moved here, I got a, uh, like a three-fold pamphlet that you fill out and it like took a few minutes. <laughs> I'm like, are you, are we being serious? Actually, a Canadian friend of mine and I were like called each other. We're like, is this for real? <laughs> like, this is so easy and so straightforward and so reasonable. But now they have developed a whole system through the IRD system where it just automatically does your taxes for you. Yeah, you heard me. Like, you don't have to do anything. It's automatically done. Uh, if there's things that you need to add or changes that happen, um, you know, within that financial year, then you have to go in and add that. You normally have to just kind of go in and just answer some questions and make sure that everything is the same and then it just prompts you, you know, 15 minutes, right? And you see your taxes. Now, another big difference that I want to highlight about this is that they take taxes out of your paycheck, just like they do in the US. <laughs> the difference is, is that they don't take too much. Generally, your taxes will even out to being exactly what it is that you owed. <laughs> you know, because especially if you haven't changed your job uh, within that year or whatever, things haven't changed for you. Like, what? There's a concept. In the US, they always take more out and then you have to file your taxes in order to get your money that you earned back at the end of the year. And then they make you feel like the government is giving you a tax return when really it was just your money to begin with. So yeah, that's what we're dealing with over there. But here in New Zealand, they don't do that. They take out legitimately what um, you owe in taxes and generally not more than that. And if they do, it's they automatically give it back to you. So like, it's amazing. Also, like if you are part of like a charity you give during the year, you can go on at any point and put that information in there up to four years past you doing it. You know, because like, I always feel like when I'm doing my US taxes, I'm like, okay, I don't want to forget something that I did um, in the year because I'm filing it this one time. But what's nice about New Zealand taxes is a lot of different features that allow you to just, you know, within the next four years or two years, you know, report it. So you don't feel like this pressure to like remember everything or like, oh, that's right, we gave to that. And, um, you know, we could get 33% back if we, um, you know, registered that as a charity that we contributed to during the year. So just a lot of great things about that. Also doing business taxes, as you know, I have a business here as well and pretty straightforward. Uh, quite easy. I mean, you're just considered a different entity, so it has its own tax return, but again, also very, very simple compared to what you have to do um, in the US. And I'm not going to go into all of that because it depends on your industry and different things on what you have to pay and how much you make. And so 
I'm not gonna touch on that, but I just wanted to kind of do an overview of how amazing it is to have to pay taxes in New Zealand coming from the US. And so keep in mind that when I lived in the US, I always paid my own taxes, did my own taxes. I owned multiple small businesses. And I just felt because tax law changes often, it affects your income dramatically if you know what's going on and then how you structure your business or how you do things matter. And so that's why I always kept up on it. And so I was very familiar with American tax law and how to do it. And so, um, so that's why I can speak quite clearly that it is much easier here uh, because I was always doing it there. And in fact, I, true story, I continued to do my own US taxes when we moved here. And uh, I ended up checking a box wrong, got a $20,000 fine. It took me 18 months of working with IRS to get that removed. Like it was an actual mistake. I had to hire a, a um, CPA in the US and she had to work it out. She's like, oh, you literally just checked a box wrong. And I was like, oh my gosh. But like, you can't like call the IRS. You can't like deal with it. It's very stressful. Then they kept sending me uh, letters in the mail saying, hey, we haven't had a chance to look at it. You're gonna have to give us another three months. And you know, so anyway, it got removed and everything's fine. But yeah, it's just like the IRS is scary and dangerous and that doesn't go away when you leave the country. And let's get into that right now. Okay, let's talk about paying US taxes. Now, I just wanna say that I'm not a professional. This isn't tax advice. I suggest that you talk to Bright Tax about this, but I'm just gonna go through, like I said, I am familiar with tax law, have paid taxes for my adult life. And so I feel like I can just give you a nice brief overview as a teacher <laughs> and try to put it in terms that are quite easy to understand. Uh, so first off, if you don't know, Americans have to pay US taxes no matter where they live and work in the world forever, as long as they are citizens, as long as they have a, a US passport. And so no matter where, there's only one other country in the world that requires this, but the US, yeah. It's, it's interesting and, I, and I'm gonna be honest with you because I have just been deep diving into it the last couple days and I'm very frustrated because it's like the whole concept of the US was started where people escape from Britain to, you know, cause no taxation without representation, but nobody's representing US expats. There's like millions of us around the world and we are just taxed like crazy, like you're about to find out. <laughs> Um, and quite unfairly when you start to see the penalties uh, and we have no representation and we don't even use the services in the US um, or in the state that we're from. And so it's, it's very interesting and a little bit frustrating. So here we go. Okay, so if you're an expat that has moved out of the US and have decided, hey, you know, I'm gonna check out life abroad, America doesn't like that. They're not making it easy and you can see it through their tax law. Okay, so it's the greatest country on earth, but they just don't want you to see the way other people do it because it might be better. So yeah, let's talk about this. So there's three things that you need to kind of think about. Now there's a lot more depending on what country. So this is applies to anybody living in any country, any American living in any of any country and have to pay taxes. Do not avoid it. Definitely go and file your tax return with the US government. There's no way around it. If you don't file it, you will have to at some point and pay all the back taxes. There's no way around it. Or, you know, they could keep you from entering the country or worse. Like they literally make whatever rules that they want around it and they don't value the fact that you've left. I would define myself as a complicated tax individual. I have a small business in the US that's complicated <laughs> and I have two in New Zealand and I have, I'm a complicated tax person. And so I have had New Zealand accountants, U.S. accounts, and I've never gotten that feeling that they really are doing everything correct because they don't always understand the other laws until I met Bright Tax. And let me tell you, they have saved me. It was the first time that I felt that I was working with a company that really understood because all of their CPAs are expats as well, and they really understand U.S. law, and that's what you really need. And then they also understand New Zealand law really well. And I was like, this is fantastic. And so, and I always ask them questions. They're so friendly. They're so responsive. Just anything that kind of comes up in my mind, I just email them. It's great. I would highly recommend. You're an American expat.
bet no matter where you live in the world that you work with Bright Tax because they are really good. They're very friendly and they only do expat taxes. So they really understand because when it comes to doing US taxes, you have to understand the different country agreements and they're really good for that. So definitely go check them out. The link is in my description. Bright Tax is where it's at. So I don't know if you've noticed if you're an American that has left uh, the US, everything is difficult. Um, it's not just the tax situation, it's also dealing with, um, you know, stocks and bonds and companies with that, even dealing with your credit card company, with your bank. They make everything very difficult. It's like, we don't like that you left, but we have, and so we have to deal with that. So, uh, so let's talk about foreign earned income exclusion. So this is number one thing. So most countries, at, I guess I shouldn't say most countries. I don't actually know. A lot of countries though have, there's this foreign, there's an agreement between the countries and there's a foreign earned income exclusion. This is true for New Zealand. And so individually, um, let me check the number, hold on. 112,000 as of 2022, you can exclude. So if I live and I work in New Zealand and I make 112,000, I will not also have to be double taxed with the US government on that money after anything after that um, I would and so if you're filing jointly then it's 224,000 so as long as you make less than that you're fine um, and so if you make more than that but then there's also ways around that so that's when you need the accountant okay so there is a foreign um, income exclusion so there is an agreement between New Zealand and the US so you don't have to pay double taxes on that but after that it gets a little bit hairier and I'm not going to try to <laughs> tackle everything with that, but that's the first thing you should know. The second thing that you should know about is called FATCA. I'm going to just read this so that I don't do this wrong. Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act of 2010. Now this is, you must report this um, if you have, and it's a certain form, it's a separate form, but it's pretty high limits. So like I think if it's jointly, it's like $400,000. So if you don't, you know, if you make less than that, or you have, it's just reporting your financial assets. If you have less than that, then I don't think you have to report it, but if you do, but a lot of people do, like if you still have your house in the US or, you know, you have different retirement accounts, you it all needs to be reported. And so this is really um, just used for just making sure that you're compliant um, to, you know, the foreign tax and financial things. Um, there is a penalty if you, meet these limits and you have not submitted, you have to pay 10,000, was it $10,000 up to like 50,000 um, a year for not doing it. So like, don't not do it. So definitely talk to, you know, an accountant or um, definitely Bright Tax because it's like really good. I'm like, oh my gosh. And this is recent, you know, 2010. And so it's not great. And so this is where you're seeing a rise in Americans uh, renouncing their citizenship because of all of these new rules. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. The second thing I want to talk about is called the F bar. Now this one is most likely you will have to file, but it's more in the intent of this one is informational. And I don't know what F bar means. So financial accounts reporting, I don't know, bank account reporting. So it's really, it's reporting your foreign bank account totals. Uh, to the government and you just need to do this. And if you don't, you're charged $10,000. I'm like, what? And I think that there's like a minimum you have to have in the bank account to do this again, but it's definitely something you should know about. Look at the F bar is, um, you know, you definitely need to do it. And then there's like this law about like, if you're willfully not participating or non willfully penalties, <laughs> it's like $10,000 penalty, or it's like even more in like jail time. If you willfully, um, you know, don't report your F bar to the US government. And it's like, then I, I like I did a deep dive. So like, what's willful and what's non willful. And like, there's no it actually <laughs> says there's no like actual, um, you know, determination as to what those are and so it's just kind of left up to the discretion of a court i believe and so like you could like like what like what's willful not willful i think it's you know sometimes it's associated with criminal activity or you know i don't know but like if you've been putting off reporting any of this i would suggest that you you know start doing that because i'm like what the heck and it's like wow and there's yeah there's no guidance for willful or unwillful um participation in this and so like yeah 
these are these are things to consider like so it's not just that we have to pay taxes to the u.s government we actually have to show the u.s government all of our assets all of our bank account totals so that they can make sure that we have paid them their due amount and if this wasn't enough to make you crazy this has promoted a lot of people not wanting to be citizens anymore so they don't have to keep reporting this taxes because it's not just reporting it you actually have to pay somebody to do it for you every year and then as you're making more money there's more craziness and penalties and oh my goodness and so you're seeing a that in 2010 or 2011 when this went into it you're seeing like a rise of people renouncing their citizenship but right now they have raised the price of that to two thousand three hundred and fifty dollars to hand them your passport so yeah per person so like my family of six do that calculation um not that we're looking to do that at all at this point but like wow I'm like, okay, so not only do you have to pay the fee, you also have to pay exit taxes, and that's based on your income over the last five years. And it literally says on the government website, on the IRS website, get a tax professional to help you with this because this is complicated. So they're not making it easy. You can't get out of this tax situation very easily. And so I'm like, oh my goodness, so every which way you are penalized, penalized, penalized. It's just all I'm seeing. And so I highly recommend that you reach out to Bright Tax. They are so great. This is like the kind of the first company that I felt really comfortable with. And like, I really, I feel like they really knew what to do from a US tax perspective and a New Zealand tax perspective. So don't hesitate. Their um, link is below and I will see you guys next week and hopefully you're on a much happier topic.